Hi, Karan. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Thanks so much for having me here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining the call today. I know you've been working in the dentistry space since a while now, and I'm really interested to learn more about your work and especially the expansion project that we'll be talking about later. So uh, let's just get started. Can you please tell me a little bit about your professional background and what inspired you to work with dentists? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I come from a small, I was born in India. I lived there until I was seven. Then I went to Newfoundland, uh, which is East Coast Canada. I grew up there. And I guess my, my entire life, I was wanting to be somebody because that's what I thought others expected of me. So I kind of followed the traditional path, going to school, did business, then working the nine to five and making six figures. And I did all the things that you're supposed to do, did all the check boxes. And I realized that I was, I was pretty empty inside. And on paper, life looked pretty sweet. And on paper, you'd think that's exactly what you want. But when you get it, you realize, wow, there's, there's so much more to it. So I thought maybe there's other people out there like me who've checked all the boxes and still are feeling unfulfilled inside. So instead of going to networking events, because typically how you meet people is networking events. And I hate networking events because they're awkward. You go in, you don't know anybody, you have to shake hand, you have to answer the question, what do you do? What do you do over 30 times? And nobody actually gets to meet one another. And it just feels like really fake relationships. So instead of doing networking events, I started hosting my own dinners where I would invite people to dinner saying, leave your business card at home, leave your business suit at home. We're coming here tonight to have a very deep conversation about you and your personal life, not necessarily your, your work life. And dinner by dinner, I hosted over 200 of these dinners in the last five years. And I've discovered that we are human first, work second. So I started working with business owners and entrepreneurs over the last five years, really trying to understand why are they the way they are? Why do they make the decisions that they make? Why are their beliefs the way that they are? And I've realized that a lot of the pain that business owners face is self-inflicted, which means they create it. So naturally, when I was looking at, hey, I wonder what other market has self-inflicted pain, dentist was at, was at the top of my list. Um, so I started studying dentists, started talking to dentists, started going to dentist events and conferences. And I realized that, again, on paper, they have it all. A great career, great time off, great staff. They own their practice in many cases, yet they feel unfulfilled. They're depressed. They're anxious. They struggle with mental health just like the entrepreneurs that I've been working with for the last five years. So that's, that's what kind of attracted me to working with, with dentists. Yeah, that's really good. And I know that we'll be talking about burnout later, but I feel that that comes from a sense of perfectionism. So what do you think? Yeah. Is it a bad thing? Perfectionism, I think it really depends on, on how you let it control you. And what I mean by that is anytime you give an idea or a concept that much power, it begins to rule your entire life. So if you tell people, hey, I'm a perfectionist, then nothing you do that's not perfect is ever going to be good enough. Dentists are taught in dental school, 100% is the only right answer. But what you don't learn in textbooks is that real life never works that way. In what situation in real life are things always perfect? The perfect condition, the perfect patient, the perfect diagnosis. It's, you know, it's life is not perfect. So perfectionism is an identity and we, we attach ourselves to identity. And once we do that and we say, I'm a perfectionist, then really what we're saying is anytime we don't score hundred percent, we're a failure. So if you're seeing 10 to 15 to 20 patients a day, and the majority of those are not hundred percent, then you go to home at night thinking you're a failure. And that's just one day. Imagine doing that over a decade career or five years or, or multiple decades. And the stress that that has on you, the stress that that has on your family, the, and the burnout that it creates, which we'll get to, but Perfectionism is one of these things that people strive for because we as society have chosen that we like perfectionists. We like people that are perfect. We like people who, who check the boxes. But what human being on earth has checked all the boxes? Seriously, I don't think it's a thing. I, I think it's a fallacy. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a goal that, again, it's self-inflicted. It's, it's self right? I work with dentists who they want to be perfectionists. And when they realize they can't get there, it kills them. It kills them inside. And um, it's, it's sad, but it's just the reality of, of how it is. And many people that are type A personality, they're very structured, very scheduled, everything's on time, every appointment, they're, they're on time if they're 30 minutes early, right? That's kind of how they run their life. And, and I used to be that way. And I realized that, wow, life is not perfect. And it's just impossible. It's like trying to ride the perfect wave when you're surfing. Every wave is different. And every day is different. Every day presents different opportunities. 
the the downside of perfectionism is that subconsciously we have the same thoughts 95 percent the same thoughts today that we did yesterday which was the day before which was the day before so if you've now compounded your thoughts your beliefs your attitudes your behaviors over the course of five years it's very difficult for you to kind of wake up it's very difficult for you to let go of habitual patterns so i think perfectionism is is admired in society but i believe deep down it's one of the biggest detriments yeah thank you so much i think that was really insightful and now talking about burnout so you have a lot of clients and you have worked with entrepreneurs and dentists in the past five years so what are the early signs of burnout do you see and i also want you to touch upon if you think that it's relevant about mindset because i know you talk about that Mm. uh, quite a lot and it's very relevant so can you please elaborate on that yeah i love both of these topics great question so the first thing is that over the years of personal development work that I've done, the coaches I've hired, the groups that I've joined, the masterminds, I've invested maybe about $150,000 in trying to learn about myself and discover who am I, why am I the way I am. And the biggest lesson that I've learned in, in five years and reading countless books on self-help and personal development is that the world that we've created physically is a reflection of the world that we've created internally. So your external is a mirror of your internal. And the moment you realize that it takes a long time for you to actually believe that is the moment things completely change. So mindset is at the heart of everything because you wake up, you have an emotion, that emotion creates a thought, that thought creates another emotion, that emotion creates another thought, and then that creates an action. So one of the signs of burnout that is, um, it's kind of hard to talk about, but people start to distance themselves from others. They start to distance themselves from patients. They start to lose passion for the work. They start to distance themselves from their spouse, maybe bury themselves back into the office. Maybe their kids, maybe they start to distance themselves from their kids. They come home after a long day, they're feeling numb inside. The last thing they want to do is have that energy because you feel like for eight hours a day, clients come in telling you, I hate the dentist. So if you also hear that for eight hours a day, what do you think about yourself, right? So I I think that the first sign is you're going to notice yourself maybe spending more time with yourself in isolation. The second thing I would, I would say is that this is happening to one of my clients right now is that she's very successful, but she does not feel accomplished at all. In fact, she feels quite inadequate. And what dentists do I know? You know, I'm succeeding at dental school, opening up their practice, getting clients like that is successful in every regard, but when you start to reduce your own satisfaction and your own personal accomplishments, that means nothing you do is good enough. Nothing is ever good enough. Even though you have a wait list of clients, even though you've got the best practice in town, you've got the best company culture, nothing you do is good enough. And what happens there is you start to begin comparing yourself to the dentist down the road. Well, they've got a bigger practice. Well, they've got a nicer office. Well, they've got a nicer car. Well, they go on more vacations. And when you start to reduce that personal satisfaction, you also start to lose touch with your clients. And the patients that are coming in, it feels very transactional. You, you, you've lost that passion that you once had of actually serving and helping. And now it seems like a chore. It seems like a routine day-to-day task. And I would say the last sign of burnout, and this one, I mean, all of them are big, is emotional exhaustion. You start to feel numb. It's like you wake up in the morning and already you're dreading the day. Already you're thinking, oh my God, it's going to be just like yesterday, which was just like last year, which was just like five years ago. You're completely numb. You're going through the motions. You're jumping from office to office, room to room, treating treatment to treatment, but you're feeling nothing inside. Every day feels the same. It's like the movie Groundhog Day. It's a, it's the same day on repeat, and you're hoping that things will change. You desire things to change, but you're so deep in the hole that you don't even know what to do next. So rather than get out of the hole, you said, you know what? This is comfortable. Let me just keep digging deeper. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And uh, I know you talked about one of your clients very briefly. So can you share a real life example of one of your clients about how they were struggling with something and uh, how they overcame that? Yep. So many of my clients are extremely successful, six figures, seven figure revenues. They've accomplished success in virtually every aspect that society has taught them that that is success. Yet they have created these identities to certain things like money, success, failure, career, relationships, where all five of those categories, they feel they have to be 100%. And when you're juggling five or six balls at once, it's very difficult to keep them all up in the air. It's very difficult for you to be 100% all the time in every single category. 
So the first thing that we do with, with any client is understand what are your attachments? What does money mean to you? What does your relationship mean to you? How do you define career? And I think a lot of coaching programs and solutions, they want to give you solutions right away. What I do is a little bit kind of opposite. I want to understand, hey, before I give you solutions, wouldn't it make sense for us to understand why have things been the way they are for the last five or six years? Like, wouldn't it make sense for us to understand your patterns, your, your behaviors? And a lot of solutions are like a Band-Aid or like a, it's like you would never build a house, a second story of a house if the foundation was broken. So most solutions will give you the second floor. They'll even give you the third floor. They'll even give you the fourth floor. Then they'll even build you the pool in the backyard. But the foundation never gets addressed. And I think the foundation is you. Who are you as a person? So I, I work with my clients to understand all of these moments in their life from their earliest memory to what happened to them while they were growing up to how did their parents treat money? What was their parents' relationship like? Do they have any siblings? How did they react? Have they ever got into arguments? What happens? There's, there's so much... There's so much like science to all of this. It's not just, here's a solution, go be happy. I wish it was that easy, but this is, I believe this is the deepest work that we'll ever get to do is discovering why we're here, who are we, and what more is there for us. Yeah, I love the process that you talked about. So can you tell me a little bit more about the expansion project that you're working on? Yeah, so the expansion project is the name of my coaching. So there's two names that, that really matter a lot to me. The first is the expansion project. To me, the word expansion means ever evolving, means constantly getting better, means trust yourself, means constantly trusting yourself, seeing, hey, where else can I get better? Where else can I grow in my health, in my relationships, in my career, in my personal development, in my spiritual, in my, in my relationship with my dad, my relationship with my sister? The, the word expansion means is that it's, it's ever growing. And I think any time an organism, a flower, a dog, a human is not growing, it's doing the opposite. It's shrinking, 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 and then eventually it dies. And that's why a lot of people die at 30, but get buried at 80. They're already dead for 50 years. They're just living, walking around earth, doing the routine behaviors, but they're not actually expanding. They've, they've restricted themselves and it's because their environment hasn't fueled them to grow. So for me, the expansion project we host three events a year all over the world, and it's an in-person three-day retreat, a transformational event where people come in understanding or not knowing who they are and leave this three-day experience thinking, wow, I can do anything that I desire. So the, the expansion project, and the reason the word project is in there is because there's no finish line, right? There, there's no finish line to life. There's no level 10 of success, and then you get to level 11 and level 12. It's a constant evolution, right? Once you get to a new level, then you, then you see the new level. Once you get to the new level, then you see the new level. So it's a project because it's, it's, it's always in motion. Yeah, that's really good. And uh, I'm glad that you said about it, it doesn't have a finish line because uh, the things that we are talking about, I think a lot of science goes into that and there's so much we can cover, you know, in like this session, for example. So what final advice do you have for anyone who is struggling in their career, but who is hesitating to make a switch or let's say seek help from a professional or from anyone, to be honest? Yeah, I think there's, there's so many things you can do without even asking for help from a professional, the first thing that I would highly advise anyone just for a moment, and it's going to sound like the most easiest piece of advice ever, yet it's going to be the most difficult to actually implement. And it's a free piece of advice. You just need to implement it. So every day when we wake up, we have immediately negative thoughts. Well, we should have more money by now. We should have more success by now. We should have more relationships by now. Our love should be deeper in this relationship. We should be going on these vacations. All of these things that are not positive. They're, they're not positive thoughts because anytime we think about what we don't have, the universe says, well, you don't have it. So the tip that I have for anybody seeking to increase or improve or enhance just even 1% of your life, whether it's business, career, relationship is just for a moment tomorrow morning or today, when you think negatively about something in your life, reframe it and ask yourself, what's the positive in this? Instead of always thinking what you don't have, appreciate what you do have and say, wow, look how far I've come in the last 12 months. Look how far I've come in the last six years. Look how far, look how different my life looked 10 years ago. And sometimes when you're able to look backwards and see, look how far you've come, then it's not so, it doesn't hurt as much to look at how much further you want to go. I think we're always chasing this finish line of fulfillment. Yeah. We're always chasing, again, that, that end product. Like I'll be happy when 
I have six figures in the bank. I'll be happy when I get my next property. I'll be happy when I get my next practice. I'll be happy when I can take time off. It's always a future-based decision. But happiness and fulfillment is not future-based. It's also not past-based. It's what's happening in this moment. So my, my advice for anybody who's looking and seeking for help is before you look externally, just look internally. I believe you, you have all the answers you need and you just need to be okay sitting in silence with yourself and having some difficult conversations with the person in the mirror. Wow, that was really good. I uh, Just when you were talking, I had one extra, like a bonus question in mind now. So what's your sure. morning routine like? <laughs> oh, I love my morning routine because I, I believe how you start your morning truly defines the rest of your day. Now, let me talk to you what a bad morning routine is. A bad morning routine is waking up, checking your phone, looking at emails, going on Facebook, Instagram, social media, replying to emails, making coffee and rushing out the door, packing lunch and just boom. Already, you've done seven or eight stressful things and now you want to start a work day? Like that is such a bad way to start your work day. So stressed. You're going to go in and you're already going to be mad at your clients and your staff and it's just... you. you it's just not a good way to start your day. So I, my morning routine, and this is what works for me. It may not work for everyone. I get up at six o'clock every day. When I get up at six, the first thing I do is I boil the kettle and then I put my headphones in and I meditate. I meditate for 10 to 15 minutes and I use a free app called Insight Timer. It's an awesome app, thousands of meditations. It's free. So I meditate for 10 minutes. As soon as I'm done meditating, I make my green tea and then I journal. I journal every single morning, a long list of, Here's how I'm feeling this morning. Here's why I'm feeling this way. Here's the problem with how I'm feeling. Here's how I can fix it. And what are the action items I can do today to get out of this headspace? I journal. Immediately after journaling, I read. I read a book either on business or personal development just to get my head in that prime state. And then I go work out. And by 9 a.m., all of this is done. That 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. window, I treat like the most sacred time to me. It's so important to me because if I don't get those three hours, then my day starts off very reactive. And I do all those things that I identified earlier, which are not, are not positive behaviors. And if you don't have three hours in the morning, because I'm sure people are watching saying, yeah, Curran, that's great. You're lucky you've got three hours. I've got 10 minutes. Cool. Just wake up and take 10 minutes to yourself in the morning. Don't check your phone. Open up your back door. Look out the window. Ask yourself, hey, what are three, three things I'm grateful for today? I'm grateful for my parents. I'm grateful that it's not raining. And I'm grateful that my dog is healthy. Cool. Giving gratitude actually proven is proven to make you happier, right? That's why when you service others, when you help others, you actually help yourself. So giving gratitude or even just thinking for a moment, a grateful thought puts you happier. It's like when you do a fake smile, the brain is like, cool, this guy's smiling. He's happy. And already I'm happier. Like this is now a real smile, but it, it was caused by the fake smile. So we can, we can trick ourselves very easily into becoming happy, into thinking happy thoughts. It's just, I believe most people are spending so much time thinking about what they don't want to have happen instead of what they actually want in life. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to try this morning routine tomorrow. And I think I should do it for at least one month so that to just get in the habit of that. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, can you please tell me like how people can contact you? Like what's the best way for people to contact you? Yeah, the best way to contact me is definitely on Facebook. I spend a lot of time on Facebook because all my clients are on Facebook. Um, but outside of that, my email is just my first name, Curran at jube.ca. I've got a website, curranajavan.com. And if you ever want to come to one of my events or even just learn more about it, I've got tons of free resources on my website. I've got blog articles talking about success, mindset, habits, why you are the way you are. And at the end of every article, there's a way to, to get in contact with me. Yeah, that's really cool. I'll add all the relevant links with this video. So that would uh, hopefully make things easier. Thank you so much for joining this call. Amazing. Thank you. I'll talk yeah, to you. Thanks so much for having me.